can change this one to true, PSCI, true, pooled error. And then finally, we've got true here. So once I have those specifications and I redo the analysis, you'll see that I would get confidence intervals if the sample sizes are equal across all groups. They would be exactly the same size across all groups. So let me actually load up a different data file to exemplify that effect a bit better. I'm going to remove objects. I'm going to get that other data file. It's three groups, one of which has a much different standard deviation than the others. My data. So here it is, three groups. Group 1, group 2, group 3. And here's the dependent variable. I'm not going to bother with labels on this one. Well, maybe I will. So 3, and I'll call it something like control, control, drug A, drug B. So let me relook at that data table and we can see now I've got this labeled group, control drug A and drug B. And now I'm gonna put that function in. Now actually before I do, I'm actually gonna put it back to false because I wanna show you the difference between the two. false and pooled false. So I just want to show you the difference between the two. And I can show you what the... So here are the means. So the means are increasing. And here are the confidence intervals, upper and lower and upper. Now let's look at that in a plot. and actually put that, I'm going to actually change my dependent variable to something like improvement, something good. All right, so here is the plot of the means, and you can see that the 95% confidence interval here is much bigger than it is here and here. All of these have the same sample size. I think it's 20 or 25. And so these confidence intervals are different, which is not consistent with an analysis of variance for which the assumption of homogeneity variance has been satisfied. It's based on a pooled error term. So how can I get this error bar chart to be consistent with an ANOVA framework, which is based on a pooled error term? Well, easy enough. Again, you just have to go into your syntax and write true for pooled error. True. True and true. So I've got to do it in three spots. So I recopy this. So these have changed. Confidence intervals have changed. So this is 7.91 versus 6.47. It was 8.14. The upper bound was 8.14. It was much bigger. Well, it was a little bit bigger. 7.91 is now the adjusted one. All these confidence intervals are based on the pooled error term. So now it will look different in the plot. And here. See that now they're actually all equally sized because they're based on an pooled error term. So that looks very different than the first one where the confidence interval was much bigger for drug B because it actually had a numerically larger standard deviation. So some people argue that if you do an ANOVA and you follow up with the error bar chart, you should base it on a pooled error term because the ANOVA itself is based on a pooled error term. And probably if you did post hoc analyses, those post hoc analyses would probably be based on pooled error terms. So it only really makes sense to do a pooled error term based error bar chart. So that's up to you to think about when you use this function. Now the last thing I'm going to point out is that there's a lot of confusion out there with respect to confidence intervals actually overlapping and evidencing a statistically significant effect. 
So on the basis of these three means and the confidence intervals, there's actually a little bit of overlap over here between these confidence intervals. I might confuse people that there's a significant difference between these two means, and there actually is if you actually did the analysis. I haven't done it here, but there is a difference. And sometimes you can find even more overlap between confidence intervals, and there's a significant difference. And that's because confidence intervals overlapping each other isn't a demarcation of non-significance or significance. Basically, you can have some overlap. Usually about half of the lower and upper confidence intervals can actually overlap and be a significant effect. Now, this syntax actually allows you to create the error bars in such a way that they're consistent with the notion of non-overlapping error bars when there's a significant effect between the means. And to get that part, you need to change difference to true. Difference equals false. You change that to difference equals true. That means that the function is now going to basically correct the confidence intervals so that they reflect a difference when there's no overlap. So this is, again is up to you to show or not. So a pooled error term plus difference true. Always got to do those three spots. And so now I'll redo this with the same data. This is both of them pooled plus difference true. You can see that the upper bound confidence interval is now even lower, 7.699, but it was 7.91. So that's that adjustment so that the confidence intervals reflect a significant difference when they're not overlapping at all. So let's get this part here. And the last bit. Now I've got the error chart in such a way that there's no overlap between these two means, which I haven't shown you with an ANOVA with post-ox, but there actually is a difference between the means here. This is a, there is a significant difference between these two means, and there's also a significant difference between these two means. In fact, there's a significant difference between all of these means. And now this error bar chart reflects that. So this one is just barely above that one. And we also have no overlap there. Again, if I redid the first one, which was non-pooled and no difference, I should say difference false, pooled error false. This is what almost everyone would do. And this is the default in most programs. And this is why I like this function is that it gives you that flexibility to do this if you want. Very few functions can do this sort of thing. So I'm just going back to the first one to show you how much overlap there is between these means. It's actually quite substantial. Now this seems quite long to do in practice, but nobody would really be doing all types of charts like this. You would just choose one ahead of time and make a decision. And that would save you a lot of time. It actually doesn't take a long time to use these four pieces of information. Whoop. So here's the overlapping error bars that suggest no difference between the means. So again, these data are consistent with the assumption of homogeneity of variance being satisfied and a significant difference across all the means. But look how much overlap there is between these means. And that might confuse people. And so if you use difference true in the syntax, you will get error bars that don't overlap if there is in fact a difference between the means. And also using a pooled error term might be more appropriate because it's certainly more consistent with doing an ANOVA, which has a pooled error term. And most post hoc analyses also use a pooled error term to test the difference between the means. So that is how you can create a standard error bar chart in R that looks similar to this one here that I created in SPSS.